Today we're going to be talking about the benefits of using OAuth to send emails via FileMaker. Now, before we begin with this demo file, you're going to need to obtain a JSON for a service account. You can do this by following the instructions in the email or in the article provided by Claris. Um, they have a really good article right here. It's linked in the article that we have written above um, that you can find. And this will walk you through the steps for creating for either Google or uh, Outlook, as those are the only two currently supported OAuth providers that you can use. Uh, our example uses a Google authentication, um, and the example JSON that they give uh, looks like this. So you'll be creating a service account. It'll have your project ID, your private key right here, client ID, service account email, and the cert URL. Now, what you're actually going to need out of here is the admin user email, which will be the email address that you use to access the admin console, either the Google Workspace admin or the Microsoft Azure admin console. The service account email address, which you can find either in that JSON or you can copy it from the admin console, and then the private key. Now, some things to note about the private key, when copying the Google one, you need to take all the way from the beginning of this dash dash begin private key all the way to the last backslash n. Otherwise, the key doesn't work. The whole key is everything, including the dash dash begin um, private key. And so once you have those three items um, stored in preferences fields, as that's recommended uh, by Claris, is to store these in global preferences fields. What you can do is create a script called, you know, send mail, and you'll have a send mail step uh, where you'll click send via OAuth2. You can then click specify to choose your OAuth provider. And then we recommend, we use uh, SQL preferences that get field to just go and make SQL queries to grab those. So that way it's not actually pulling in those values. Um, and then you'll just need to give it your service account, your admin user email and a private key. Then you can set up the rest of it like that. And from there, you just need to give your users a UI where they can enter in a test email. So we'll type in some test information here. And if we want to send ourselves an attachment, we can do it like that. And then we can click send email. On success, you'll get a little dialog that says email successfully sent. And then if we go over to the inbox, you'll see here we got a test email, test, 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 and we got our attachment. It's as simple as that. All you got to do is follow Claris's nice article. Um, there's nothing super weird about it. You will need access to, like I said, the Google Workspace Admin Console or the Microsoft Azure portal if you're using Outlook. Uh, both of those are valid. And you'll just follow these steps through this guide to get your uh, account set up. Once you have the account set up, store your um, credentials in preferences fields, and then you can just create a script step using those OAuth credentials. Now let's talk about some of the benefits of sending emails this way. The first one is security. Uh, SMTP sends your username and password in the request body 
when you are making an SMTP request to a server. This allows your password to be exposed, which then can lead to leaked credentials. The second is um, a lot of companies are deprecating SMTP support. Uh, specifically, Google in the coming months will be deprecating SMTP support for untrusted third-party uh, applications. OAuth 2 is the you know new shiny email format, and so they're kind of trying to make the push to have everyone jump on there as it's more secure, it's more reliable, it's more robust. And the other thing is with OAuth, it uses tokens, so it never exposes your actual password across the internet. Instead, what it does is it uses that combination of client secret and service account email to go up, make a request to the, an auth request to the server, get back a token, and that's what it uses to log in with. Um, now, if you want to set this up to send emails on behalf of other users in your system, you have to set that up on your actual service account side. In the Claris article, um, for Google to do this, you have to give it domain-wide range if you want to do it for all your users. Be careful with that. Um, you know, if, if someone gets a hold of that service account, uh, that means they can send emails on behalf of anyone in the company. So um, there is a slight risk there. Or you can specify certain email accounts in the actual Google workspace that users that are enabled users that the service account can send emails on behalf of. This is good for sending out like automatic emails. If you want to send out nightly emails about, hey, here's your project update, or here's your progress update on these 10 accounts, or here's your invoice or shipping notice, any of those things that require a nightly email, um, this is really good for. And just to reiterate again, the things you'll need is to create a service account so you can get the service account JSON. This one is Google specific. Um, the Outlook one requires slightly different details that are just called differently, but essentially are the same thing. Once you have this, you'll extract the private key, the service account email, and your admin user email. And again, the admin user email is the email that you use to access the Google Workspace admin. And then from there, you just want to create a script step where you change from email client to OAuth2, click specify, choose your provider, either Google or Microsoft, and then pass in your service account email, your admin user email, and your private key if you're using Google. And then if you're using Outlook, it will look like this. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.